or get builds. So you're gonna be doing your LS swap and you're gonna try to start it and fire it off for the first time. And it's so exciting, but you don't know what kind of harness you wanna use and what options are out there and whatever will be worth the money, you know, in time and effort and putting into it to make it fire off and not have problems. So let's go over the, the pros and cons and the options you have for LS harness swaps from Amazon, Jags, Painless, even a junkyard harness like I use in my C10. Let's go over it, let's talk about it, and let's uh, see what might be a good option for you to use. All right, guys and gals, we're going to get into the dirty, nitty-gritty details. Because if you've finally got that dream project that you've been working hard on, you got the LS in, you're, you're trying to figure everything out to be able to get it started for the first time, fire it off, but you're trying to figure out what harness to use. And you don't want to deal with any kind of... Uh, unexpected issues when you're going along with it so we have a few options we're going to go over what's available and you know pros and cons and, and just give you an idea of what you can do and you know i'll give you my own two cents if that even matters but let's get into it so we're going to look at four options okay we're going to look at the stock ls gm wiring harness that you can get out of a junkyard uh, donor truck and we're going to look at uh, some standalone options, you know, from a couple aftermarket manufacturers, you know, Jags, uh, Painless, uh, Amazon. So starting off, let's let's talk about the aftermarket options, right? You know, because you want to be on a budget and you don't want to go over the budget and go all crazy and, and spend too much money on on the engine harness, right? But it, it depends on what you're using. It depends on kind of what you're doing to... Um, you know, if you're going to be using the factory PCM or if you're going to be doing a Holly, um, you know, Holly EFI, you know, anything like that, right? Or ACES or Fitech, you know, those have their own harnesses um, and you don't have to go with this option. But if you're going to be using the factory PCM and you want to figure out how to wire it up and hook up the PCM to get everything going and get started, you can use one of these aftermarket harnesses, um, you know, looking at JEGS, you know, 400 bucks, you know, actually 408.89 and that is without shipping tax all that stuff and that's just the harness for standalone um they have different different options to choose from either drive by wire drive by cable that you can look up um and then also depending on the type of connector you got your red uh red and blue connector or your blue green connector uh you know p01 or p59 pcm um and this is for gen 3 you know, for Gen 4, there, there's harness options too. Um, but for Gen 3, if you're doing a standalone, you can use one of these. It comes with a little fuse box. You know, it's got all the all the labels on it. It's not bad. Standard length. It's like it says. And it uses uh, the EV1 injector plug style. So you got to think about that too, depending on type of injector you got. Because if you have a, the other injectors, you don't have an EV1, you'll have to get uh, the little adapters uh to go on the injector and then to the plug for the for the harness for the fuel injectors um it's not a bad option right it doesn't it's not bad a little bit better than what you can find on ebay um or amazon um so that's one option let's go for the big daddy though right if you're kind of going all out and you want to you, you're concerned about quality and you want to make sure that you're getting the best best uh type of materials for the harness and and no no unexpected issues with the pins and things like that you can use a painless wiring harness again these are more expensive you're looking at from anywhere from 570 to 770 you know 762 for a harness for a standalone harness that's that's that's, that's up there you know if you're you're on a budget build you you don't want to blow all your money on something like this if you can get it you get something cheaper right but if you're worried about quality and you want to make sure that you have no issues down the road you can use one of these and if you just look at the website you can check out their harness you know comes all labeled you know all the types of connectors OBD2 connector port already wired up you know it's got a nice little fuse box uh, with the relays. Um, comes with everything that you need right and this is a gen 4 
So this is a Gen 4 harness. Um, so this is an option for Gen 4 guys and gals. Uh, and again, they have Gen 3 as well, like uh, 98 to 04, LS1, LS6, LS2. So choose your poison. This is all based on what you'd like to do. Now, again, if you don't have a PCM, you got to buy a PCM um, along with the the harness and yeah, make sure you get the correct PCM for the gen generation LS you have. Um, gen three, you know, P zero one P fifty nine PCM, uh, gen four. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it in the, in, in the description, but these are options. And then another option is your Amazon good old Amazon harness, which is coming from somewhere across the pond. And, uh, who knows the quality of it? I've, I've heard a lot of horror stories and I've seen, uh, an LS swap done with one of these and they're okay on a budget. You know, if you're just wanting to get something like on a test stand and fire it up, just to confirm that the engine's going to run. And this is fine, right? This is fine. Um, Again, the quality of the wires is, is something to question. Usually you have copper-coated um, aluminum uh, wires instead of pure copper wire, copper strand wires. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, uh, especially when it comes to high amperage because um, anything that's pulling enough amps, it, those wires are going to get hot. And you can expect those connectors, you know, the pins and the connectors and all that to get hot too, depending on what load is on it. Uh, but again, if you're wanting to just get something started and you're wanting to save up for a better harness and this is an option for you. Now, is there a guarantee that the connector is going to be pinned correctly? Especially at the PCM connector. Uh, you got maybe an 80% chance of the pins being correct. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. You're going to have to check your pins and make sure that they're pinned correctly before you plug it up and power your PCM and, and start your engine. So this is an option. Definitely uh, something to keep in mind if you're on a budget. And then the last thing, with a factory harness, you can keep all of this. Just go to the junkyard. Find yourself, you know, the same year model, you know, Gen 4, Gen 3, vehicle get the harness get the fuse box cut the cut the harness off at the at the bulkhead connector or just take that with you because you could use that too but at least take the fuse box and get the, all the engine harness trans harness get everything and you can usually find these for dirt cheap as long as you find one that hasn't been cut already because a lot of people will cut them at the harness at the section where it goes to the pcm they usually just snip that but if you, if you find one that's complete, even if it's got the PCM, take the PCM too, if, if it's within your budget, because you can always use a spare, especially for like a Gen 3 or a Gen 4, you know. But grab the harness, grab the trans harness, and then you can inspect it and make sure everything looks good, make sure the connectors look good. And uh, it's a lot cheaper than doing an Amazon harness. And the quality is a lot better than the Amazon harnesses which, you know, we kind of covered, but this is an option. Don't be afraid to do something like this, especially if you're on a budget, because it can be a lot more beneficial and you can always trim the harness down if you feel confident in doing that or do like I did. I didn't even trim the harness down. I just left it as is and I covered up all the connectors I'm not using. Um, and then it works just fine. We're not trying to make a fancy show car. This is just for getting around every day. Now, with the Junkyard Ellis Harness, you can get away with a lot of stuff, right? You, you, but you also get a lot of benefits. You get a lot of good quality connectors, at least good wiring. And it's already got everything that you need. Even if it's got extra stuff that you might not be using, you could use it later on if you decide to, or you just trim it down and, and thin it out and you can use the wiring and the connectors for other stuff. Um, so if you have questions about 
the wiring. If you're going to be doing a chunk yard wiring harness, so you want to thin it out, check out lt1swap.com. There's tons of resource information on here. Um, wiring schematics for you know, 99 to 2002 to 2003, 2004, or 2007, excuse me, uh, truck schematics, um, 4L60 to 4L80E harness conversion, tons of stuff. Shows you the pinouts for the connectors for doing a standalone uh, with a factory like junkyard harness, um, showing you which pins you need to use, you know, for you know the blue red connector or the blue green connector. Um, and then it kind of goes through how to thin it out if you wanted to thin it out and then what steps to take and then all that stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, also, if you're, if you're doing the junkyard harness, get, get a PCM. If you can get them for cheap. I know my local junkyard, you can get them for 25 bucks, I think. Um, so I usually pick one up every time I go to the junkyard, I'll pick up a PCM because who knows when I could use one. Um, even though the Gen 3 are starting to get phased out, people are starting to use Gen 4, you know, LS swaps, but still, uh, that's an option. And then finally, if we're going to go through the, the broke dead builds rating, right? If we're going to rate, rate these things and we're going to figure out what, uh, we want to rate, rate these to, you know, superior to good, to acceptable, acceptable to poor. Let's do that real quick. If we look at harness quality, the junkyard GM harness, you know, factor GM harness is going to be the superior one. Um, I, would, I mean, it's right along there um, with the painless wiring one. The painless wiring harness is is going to be a lot, almost as as good or even better than the the factory OEM. Um, but the GM, the factory OEM junkyard harness, if you get one that's good shape that's not been cut, it's going to be better than anything that you can get. Um, as far as wiring quality, you know, connectors, all that stuff. So superior would be the GM junkyard harness. Uh, following that would be the painless wiring harness. That would be good. The JEGS is on the on the verge of acceptable and good, depending on who they have manufacturing it, which it's most likely China somewhere. Uh, no offense, but the quality is going to be hit or miss. And then the very last one would be, you know, poor, which is the you know, Amazon or eBay, you know, harness that you can get that has questionable pin pinouts and wire quality and connector quality, things like that. If we're going to look at pricing though, um, as far as the cheapest to expensive, if you're going to be doing a budget build, the GM or the factory LS harness from the junkyard is going to be your cheapest option. Um, if, if you find go to the junkyard and get one, you could get one probably for, you know, 50 bucks or less. I think I got mine for, again, I think it was like maybe $20, $30. Um, and then the runner up would be the Amazon harness as far as cost, you know, anywhere from, depending on where you find it, uh, 50 to maybe $200, um, depending on what gen you're gonna look at and if it's gonna include uh, the transmission connector or if it's gonna have a, you know, no trans uh, connector on the harness. Um, and also if it's gen three or gen four drive by cable, drive by wire, um, things like that. So that's anywhere from 50 to 200, kind of like what we saw earlier, uh, the Jegs harness, you know, two to $400, you know, from what we saw for a little more expensive. And then for the real expensive one, you know, what we saw 500 to almost $800, the painless wiring one, uh, that's going to be, uh, the biggest hit on the wallet. If you're going to be doing a budget build, you know, so again, to each his own, whatever, whatever flavor you like. And then, you know, overall bro dead builds ranking, uh, superior quality would be, you know, the GM, uh, the factory OEM LS harness that you can get, uh, with the painless wiring harness falling closely behind as good. And then acceptable would be the Jegs one again, you know, goes over, where it's made and all that stuff too. Um, and then poor would be the Amazon or eBay harness. Uh, so if it's, it's, it's all personal preference. It's all kind of what your budget allows. And, you know, I'd say just try to see which one works best for you. You know,
No, I didn't have much of a action going on with this video, but I just wanted to go over the details so you guys and gals know what options are out there, which you can just do it on your own with a Google search. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this information and you can use it to your benefit. Um, if you find this helpful, let me know. If not, let me know anyway. I want to know if I'm doing anything right on here because I uh, just doing what feels somewhat okay. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that uh, ring bell notification so whenever I post new content, you get notified. Yeah, because that's good.